I've talked many times on this channel about the weirdness of the quantum world, but there's one phenomena that stands far and above the rest when it comes to weirdness. Something so strange it seems to defy all the laws of physics as we know it. I'm talking, of course, about quantum entanglement, or as Einstein called it, spooky action at a distance. Spooky action at a distance. Ah! Don't worry, that's not a spider. That's just my new green screen. Actually, let me let me take care of that real quick. Better, yeah? All right, where were we? Oh yeah, weird quantum stage. Rhett Elliott asked, can you do a video on quantum entanglement? So subatomic particles are measured through several sets of data according to their location in space-time, also known as its information. One of these vectors is called spin, which is a function of its angular momentum. Of course, this being the quantum world is not as simple as just an object rotating. The spin is released in quantum packets, which requires the particle to be given a quantum number. And one of the little rules is that the particle can't change its speed of rotation, but it can change the direction of its rotation. Now, like a lot of things on this channel, there's a lot of science and math behind how they figure out the rotation of a particle. And I'll link to all that down below, but suffice to say, they have figured out a way to do it and it's very reliable. So now we understand spin. So let's step back a bit. A few weeks ago, I did a video on the double slit experiment. You can see it right here. It explains how subatomic particles exist in probability states, also known as superposition, which means that they exist in all positions at the same time until they are measured, which causes its waveform to collapse, at which point you can measure its spin. Before the waveform collapses, it's spinning in all directions at once. Now imagine that one of those photons were split into two while in superposition, which it turns out is fairly easy to do by shining light through the right type of crystal lattice. Now you have two separate particles in superposition. What would happen if you measured one of them? Would both of their waveforms collapse? Or just the one you measured? It turns out they both collapse. The change you make in one particle automatically affects the other. You observe this one, this one collapses. You change the spin of that one, the other one changes. And it happens instantaneously, no matter how far apart the particles are. Even if the particles are in two galaxies millions of light years away, they change direction instantaneously. This is quantum entanglement. Of course, this breaks all kinds of physical laws. How does this information travel faster than the speed of light when the speed of light is the fastest thing in the universe? The answer to that question can be summed up in one mathematical equation. Yeah. It's far more than just a strange quirk of the quantum world, though. The Big Bang Theory states that all matter started from a single point and spread outwards, which means that there could be entangled particles all over the universe. In fact, every particle could be entangled with another particle or groups of particles or even billions of particles. And every time we measure a particle or change its spin, we're actually affecting other particles all over the universe. There's even a theory by our old friend John Archibald Wheeler called One Electron Universe Theory, which is exactly what it sounds like. It theorizes that every electron in the universe is the same electron, traveling backwards and forwards in time on a world line that has been folded up on top of itself like a giant knot. I'll give you a second to put your brain back into your head on that one. Now go through the ear. The ear's the best way to go. So you can see why Einstein had a real problem with quantum entanglement as a thing and never really fully accepted it. He and several other scientists came up with alternative theories that they called loopholes. Unfortunately for Einstein, new experiments are erasing the loopholes and proving once and for all that quantum entanglement is a real thing. Just last week, some researchers at the Calvi Institute of Nanoscience in the Netherlands were able to connect quantumly two particles at a distance of 1.3 kilometers, which is to this point the furthest they've ever been able to do so. Future experiments aim to lengthen this distance. There's even one in the works where they're going to send a quantumly entangled particle up to the International Space Station. As for what applications this may have, some scientists imagine the possibility of a worldwide computer network connected through entangled particles in which information would be in all places at all times. There would be no such thing as internet speed. The internet would just be there. I see your gigabit internet and raise you infinity. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, hit the thumbs up button. That helps Google show it to more people. And if this is your first time here and you like it, put a ring on it and subscribe. I come back every Monday with more videos just like this. Be sure to share this with other curious people. And if you have a question you'd like answered, you can ask it in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter at Joe Scott Writer and we can blow some minds together. The world's a fascinating place and I'm here to share all that interestingness with you. So go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you back here on Monday for the next Answers with Joe. Thanks a lot for watching. Love you guys. Take care.